at the at entry please enter with your full name the only that you would like to be mentioned in your survey so thank you for that if you already entered with a other name please um, unjoin and join back with the full name as you want in the survey thank you next time please music music stop running sir it's difficult to on and off sir no okay okay Frankly, YouTube lo the first page is, then second slide, then college video. Okay. Architecture is also a field that deals with designing of shelters, one of the three basic necessities of human beings apart from food and clothing. For any architectural education institute, three things are essential. First one is the infrastructure, second one is the mentors and the faculty and the third one is the environment in which this teaching learning process takes place. Prior to coming here as the Dean of Midas, I had been to many other places in the capacity of teaching as well as in the capacity of uh, professional practice. I am a person who truly believes in nurturing the education Buddha. So my message to the students and parents and the faculty of Midas is that everybody is bestowed and gifted with their own unique talents. Somebody has to nurture it. Somebody has to help you identify your strengths and then work on it to become successful and grateful. So Medas is a place where you can come, get identified. You can find out who you are, what you are. And this is the place which is bestowed with such faculties and the facilities which helps and nurtures the students to come, find out, identify, and conquer the world.
today. Over to Shashank, sir. Thank you, Pravin. Uh, good morning, Professor uh, Briggs, and good, good, morning. Uh, good afternoon to uh, my students, uh, faculty, and all our guest participants here, here in India. It is a great day today for us. I welcome you all to the virtual session on the Himmelblau Experiment 2 from, from Decon to AI, presented live by Professor Wolf D. Briggs from Vienna, Austria. Uh, to begin with, uh, I will share a few minutes, take a few minutes to introduce our esteemed speaker also. Uh, so, deconstructivism has been a much popular movement or a style of architectural expression evolved in 1980s. It reflected the freedom from stereotype thinking and set principles of designing followed before and gave way to innovative design thinking. Most of us, especially the youngsters, admire the buildings or the architecture having very iconic and expressive forms of postmodern era believed to be the outcome of deconstructivist architecture movement. Today, we are lucky to have with us Professor Wolf D. Briggs, an eminent international personality associated with deconstructivist architecture movement to conduct this virtual session. I take pride in introducing our esteemed speaker briefly to the participants. Wolf D. Briggs, born in 1942 in Vienna, is a co-founder design principal and CEO of Co-op Himmelblau since 1968. He studied architecture at Vienna University of Technology, the Architectural Association of London, as well as the Southern California Institute of Architecture in Los Angeles. From 1993 to 2011, Wolf D. Pricks has been the professor for architecture at the University of Applied Arts in Vienna, Austria. Co-op Himmelblau is operating in the fields of art, architecture, urban planning and design based in Vienna and Los Angeles with projects worldwide. Their work represents a wide variety of scales and typologies in humorous as well as residential buildings. State Award and Was the Austrian Corporation of Honor for Science and Art. He is counted among the originators of the deconstructivist architecture movement and was awarded with numerous international architecture awards also. Co-op Himmelblau had its international breakthrough with the invitation to the exhibition Deconstructivist Architecture at MoMA New York in 1988. The company's most well-known international projects include the BMW Welt in Munich, Akron Art Museum in Ohio, Central Los Angeles Area High School for Visual and Performing Arts, the Busan Cinema, Cinema Center in Korea, the Dalian International Conference Center in China, House of Musing in Alborg, Denmark, Musi D Confluences in Lyon, France, the European Central Bank in Frankfurt, Germany, the Museum of Contemporary Art and Planning exhibition in Shenzhen, China, and many more. On behalf of Midas, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to Professor Pricks for accepting the invitation and sparing his precious time for us today. Thank you, sir. Now, I, I request you to begin your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I'm happy that uh, finally we could yeah. come together. Yeah. So, ich möchte da okay. anfangen. Ja, ja, ich mach's gleich. Nein, nein, nein. Ja, ja, ist klar. Dann können wir Moment. Da mit dem zweiten Coop Himmelblau. Mit dem, ne? Nein, nein, dem zweiten. Da? Ja. Eine Sekunde, es geht noch nicht. Eine Sekunde. So, und jetzt muss ich teilen und jetzt da. Ja, jetzt geht's, jetzt können Sie normal klicken. Ja, ja, ja. Das geht. Okay. Can you see the cloud? Yes, sir. Okay. Ja. Um, 
the, the, my lecture today is separated, uh, divided in three parts. First, uh, some comments, general comments about architecture. Then um, the uh, definition of uh, some theoretical parts. Then the uh, definition of deconstructivist uh, methods, which I think is not really interpreted in many, many articles. And then I show you some uh, buildings, and uh, the last part is the future of architecture, how we see it. Hello, 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 can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Sir. So, sorry for the disturbance, sir. You can go ahead. Yeah, okay. Himmelblau was founded in 1968. This was the moment where the mankind could see our planet Earth uh, as uh, from the outside, meaning at this time every paradigm was changing, not only in politics, but also in culture, in philosophy, education, technique and so forth. This was the moment when we founded Coop Himmelblau and Himmelblau translated means sky blue. And we said it's not a color, but the idea of having architecture um, uh, changing like clouds. So this was our first uh, project. Um, it's a living environment within a air-filled bubble and the platforms, moving platforms, can um, fix any and every, every um, uh, spatial condition. From then on, we did a lot of projects and I show you in five minutes our 50-year work.
50 years in five minutes. It's funny to look at that as the oldest of the team. Uh, so the question is, what is architecture? I know it's a difficult question, and I, I give you a very, very easy answer. What is architecture? My answer is yes. Um, you know, the discussion about architecture is today is mainly we discuss only the visible part, uh, not, um, not talking about the invisible architecture. In, since the Titanic, we know that the invisible uh, architecture is the, uh, the invisible part of the iceberg is the most dangerous one. So what is the invisible architecture? Is politics, economy, economy, ecological things, codes and rules, tastes, uh, all the things are coming together and we architects have to mingle it up and uh, make it three-dimensional as the expression of uh, our culture. No one will, uh, will deny that uh, this pyramid is architecture. But look at the program. The program is the white part in this drawing. This is the program. The black part is the visible part. It's the, it's the architecture. If you go to a client right now, today, and tell them, okay, I will build you a pyramid and this is your program. <laughs> you will be thrown out in five minutes. Because this is the way the, uh, the investors look at architects nowadays. On the left side, you can see the client, the brief of the client. And on the right side, you can see this is the budget. And, and we architects have to handle that. But we are a lot of architects, like sardines in the pool of sharks. Um, uh, the sharks uh, mean uh, the investors and the clients. But we are as, uh, as many as sardines uh, are in a swarm, but we architects have no swarm intelligence. And I have to tell you that I don't want to be, uh, maybe you know the lemmings, there's a little, little um, animals jumping over a cliff and um, in order to <laughs> make suicide, I don't want to be in the first row of the, of the lemmings. It's better to be in the last row, I have to say. Our world is a complex system. Complex systems causes complex problems. Complex problems you only can solve with complex solutions. The problem is that complex solutions are very hard to understand and very hard to communicate. But the opposite of complex solutions are easy solutions. Easy solutions are um, very easy to under, um, simple solutions are very easy to understand. Therefore, all our politicians are using, um, using simple solutions. But the uh, difference between complex uh, complexity and simplicity is that com um, easy, uh, complex solutions are always new in opposite to simple solution. If, uh, if you look at this uh, um, guy on the left side, he's a Stone Age hunter following the track uh, of, a, uh, um, of a deer. What this was very easy to, uh, to be successful in this time. Now, in our society, we have to find on the airport at the right time, the right gate, the right plane who brings us to the right uh, destination. 
public and public and uh, uh, public and uh, private space. This is the best. Um, uh, this image describes the problem of public and private uh, in a very, very straightforward way. Our life is dictated by the by the mobile phones. Uh, they, I love you. <laughs> they never talk to the people again. Looking in their eyes, you are talking to the mobile phone. Uh, everyone should know this painting. It's Michelangelo's uh, painting uh, in the Sixteen um, Chapel. It's Adam, and God is waking him up, waking him up to life. How would Michelangelo paint this painting today? Maybe like this, but rather like this. To overcome gravity was always a dream of uh, mankind, looking at the uh, looking at um, uh, the Gothic cathedrals um, uh, and the buildings where people want to overcome gravity by construction. But by conquering the outer space, there is one thing lost, namely the... Doesn't work. Hold on a second. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. But I cannot move this image. So unshare and share once again, sir. Uh, you have a very complicated system, I have to say. Ah! Just stop presenting and share once again, sir. Just take one. I have to. Sorry. Uh, now share it once again. Uh. Click the share button on your screen, sir. Square box with our. Sir, mark. he's not Talks. here in the meet, sir. Meenakshi, sir. Wait, 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 wait. Left. Ah, uh, right, sir, so he left. Yeah. Yeah, wait for wait. Uh, we request all the participants to just wait. We've had a small technical issue. The speaker will be back with us in a few seconds. Yes, sir, his connection might be lost. Provinces so screen and the post to put on it. One second.
we apologize for the inconvenience um, please wait we are facing a few uh, technical issues it will be sorted out in a few minutes Participants, uh, we apologize for the interruption. Uh, please wait for a few minutes. Uh, we are facing a few technical issues which we are sorting out. Uh, kindly wait. Thank you. Speaker has lost the connection, sir. Yes, sir. So any update, update, sir? He is connecting back? Yeah, 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 he's connecting. Okay, okay, sir. Pravin, sir, you can announce. Message. He is just messaged. Okay, sir, okay, sir. Yep. Participants, uh, sorry for the interruption again. Um, please hold on for a few minutes. Uh, we are having a few issues at the speaker's end. Uh, we'll re he'll reconnect in a few seconds, uh, a few minutes. So kindly just wait for a few more minutes. Thank you. Provincer, once you connect, you can share the screen. Yes, definitely. Please let me know, sir. I won't be able to see. Okay, sir. No problem. Yes.
meenakshi sir is it possible to uh, um, reschedule this video video the whatever you shown is projects no it's after end only show. i am able to no no okay just wait we can just watch his projects we have in website Friends, a round more announcement, Pananga. Yeah. Um, good evening, and um, sorry for the interruption. We are uh, we are facing a few te technical issues on the speakers' end. Uh, we request you to wait for a few more minutes. We'll uh, restart as at the earliest. Thank you. He is trying to connect actually. Message. Uh, Meenakshi sir, could you help them out with the connection? They say you join back. Sir. Okay. And stop. Yeah, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, please continue. Okay, yeah. okay. Perfect. Share the PPT and yeah. continue. Yeah. Yeah, I will. What was the last um, slide you saw? Because Mr. Frix continued. And uh, what was the last slide you saw on the screen? Can you remember? Yeah, wait. He was the robo uh, the the space. The, the, the astronaut. Space image where the yeah. astronaut turned. Okay. Against Down. gravity. Yeah. Against gravity. Okay. Okay. And you don't. Uh, you didn't hear me. No. So I did ten minutes <laughs> without. You didn't listen. Ten minutes. Yeah, we can. We can hear you, sir. Yeah, but I was talking, talking, talking because I didn't know that you are. The astronaut, astronaut. Twenty-eight slides, sir. Yeah, twenty-eight. 
Yes. That is his, uh, that is his now you can see the, the slide. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, okay. yes sir, yes sir. And yes. you can hear me? Yes sir. Yes, yes, sir. yes sir. You can continue, sir. You didn't see that? No. Yes, sir. The chair. Yes or no? Yes. No, no we didn't. We can see the chair. No, we can see. Okay. Now you can see, but you didn't see it before and you yeah, didn't yeah. hear Did, what yeah. I was saying. Tell me. No, we, didn't, we didn't see this slide before because that time uh, it got disconnected. When you were trying to click on that slide, it got disconnected. Okay. Soll ich mich draußen hinsetzen und warten ein bisschen? Ja, das wäre es. Die Zeitung ist da, ja, ja. Kaffee ist da, Aha. was immer, ja. Okay, sorry. So I said, overcome the gravity and not by chance. You are lying in the chair of Corbusier in the same position the astronauts have when they overcome gravity. Yeah? And since yes, we are moving in a gravityless um, uh, space, the central perspective is obsolete. That means in only two days, tomorrow will be yesterday. It's a very important sentence in our time. And you didn't see that? Say yes or no? No, sir. No. And you, and you didn't hear when I was talking about de, uh, deconstructivist methods? No, sir, I don't think so. Okay, okay, okay. Um, you know, this, uh, the, the method of deconstructivist architecture is always confused with putting forms and shapes together in a very confusing way. Uh, this is not correct. We know that, that the deconstructivist method is a philosophy from Derrida, we, who was a student of uh, Freud. Freud was operating with subconscious. He said our subconscious is leading us, uh, leading our life whether we want it or not. So when we started Himmelblau, we said we have to change architecture immediately and radical. So how can we do it? We said, okay, we take the, the, the process of designing and change it in order to get a new vocabulary in the architectural expression. So uh, we can compare that with a jumping whale. The whale is coming from the deep ocean, the, uh, and by changing the media from water to air, 30 tons can fly. So this uh, is the perfect example how we see deconstructivism. This is a, a drawing expressing uh, the emotion of the upcoming house. This is a, a project for a client in California. Uh, my, uh, my partner and I was talking about the house many, many times in, in a diverse direction, but never thinking about spatial consequences. And one day I was sitting down and closing my eyes and using the pen as a seismograph uh, to, uh, to note the emotionally outbreak um, uh, we will have when we step into the upcoming house. Um, in order to be not led astray by, by, by the drawing, I closed my eyes and this, this is the perfect psychogram of the upcoming house, then we built immediately a model, measured the model by a metal scale, and then we started to draw um, uh, this in an architectural, uh, to catch the, this emotion in architectural plans and sections. 
this is the model of the house, um, uh, and this is the structure of the house, which was a very important part, because this uh, structure shows the emotional um, um, outcome of the space. Um, uh, and it shows also that I don't like columns, because columns always indicate pressure. I'm going for tension rods to, to make the whole structure, uh, to change the structure from a, a static uh, into, a, into a dynamic um, 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 structure. The same with the rooftop, a drawing, a model, and this was uh, the, the model we exposed in the uh, show um, in, uh, in the MoMA, Deconstructivist Architecture. And the funny thing was when, <laughs> when uh, the people saw this model, they said, you will never be able to build it. And we laughed a lot because this was under construction. Then we broadened up the, our methods by introducing music as a tool in our formal language as well. This is, a mo is this the model of a mobile um, music pavilion in Munich. Um, a mobile means a lightweight structure. Lightweight structures have no good acoustics, as we know. So we decided to uh, enlarged our, the surface of the building by peaks, which swallow the sound from the outside, uh, reflect the, the, yeah, the sound from the outside, and create a very, very um, um, uh, not noisy inside, meaning a very, very calm inside. So people can hear and can play music, and the audience can hear them. We uh, here you can see the peaks you saw on the model uh, provide a lot of um, uh, decreasing sound even on the plaza where the uh, pavilion is standing. And then I said, okay, how we can, uh, since this is a, a music pavilion, I want to have um, uh, to use my favorite composers in order to create the, the length and the width of the peaks. And we used um, Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze, and uh, Mozart's um, uh, opera. To measure the models and bring it into um, plans um, was not satisfying for us at these times. And when I discovered a movie uh, studio in Los Angeles who is measuring and duplicate um, uh, the Nofrutetti uh, uh, sculpture with a space arm, I went there and I bought this uh, a tool, and since then we are working very intensely with the computer, hand drawing, analog work, work together with computer work is now our style. Because only working with um, um, with the 
computer will will is not satisfying because the emotion cannot caught by the computer. So we need the hand. So we build a, um, a museum um, right from the from the model uh, from the model to one to one. And this is our last project, not the last one, one of our last one projects. It's a, a vertical city divided in three parts, the community space in the in the base, shopping malls and so forth. Then we have office, a hotel, and in the third district, high up are uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, parks, uh, which are se separating the the, the, the the blocks. Here you can see how it uh, looks like in the plans. Ich habe eine bitte sehr komplizierte Sprichtaut. <lacht> ja, ja, ja. Naja, was ich, ich habe jetzt, musste jetzt eine, eine Viertelstunde wiederholen. Ich habe eine Bitte, können Sie die, meine, meine Gäste auf 7 Uhr verschieben? Weil ich muss ja dann noch reinkaufen, ja? wenn Sie das verlautbaren. Ja, 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 ja. danke. <lacht> Warum nicht gleich später? <lacht> ich wollte die Zeit bei uns tun haben. Ja, ja, genau. Danke. Danke, danke. Ja, das hat lange gedauert. Aber der Jan sitzt jetzt bei mir. <lacht> danke. Ja, danke. Look at the kangaroo. So, we are not only doing big uh, things, also very uh, uh, small things as well. And this is a um, Protestantic chapel in my hometown. And uh, when they come to us, they say that we want to have an um, eight by eight meter chapel with all the uh, other rooms. I said, okay, we will do it like uh, we will make a, a roof sculpture and we used um, the shape of a Gothic roof from the 12th century, uh, which is a bone, uh, bone um, collection there inside. And we took the curve and remodeled it many ways so that on the model as well, on an analog model as well. So, and we build it in a shipyard like we did it with the museum. We transport it to, um, uh, uh, to the site and uh, weld it together and then...
right side you can see the old Baroque um, church um, uh, tower, and on the left, uh, the contemporary one. In order to get it built in a perfect shape, because the the light tubes are penetrating in the, the ceiling as well, and we would like to have very sharp edges. We uh, made it very, very old fashioned with raw, in order to get all these shapes and, and very detailed uh, edges uh, perfectly done. Uh, that, of course, comes from my appreciation to Corbusier. See how stupid uh, Miss van der Rohe is laying the roof on the wall and see how Corbusier did. He introduced a, a joint of light and we used it as well. Yeah, and even the, 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 the roof of uh, Rochon and La Tourette, the light tubes, uh, 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 the, the role models, of this uh, further developed uh, project. Um, Corbusier ended the light tubes here. Our light tubes are going through the ceiling, creating an inner space, a very uh, different and differentiating inner space. And even the altar, the table is uh, done by the same geometry. Uh, this is one of my favorite buildings because the client was the, the, the best client I ever had because when I did the sketch, he said, um, okay, this is it. He is a collector, he is a baker and collect, uh, he's collecting everything which is um, connected with bread and he wants to have a museum where he can put all these bits and pieces in one room. And when I made this sketch um, describing as a Wunderkammer, which is in Europe the first museum we had in the 16th century, where, uh, where the emperor was collecting bits and pieces from paintings to crocodiles, and even on the floor we said, okay, um, I do it the same way, and the client said, okay, that's it, do it for me. Um, and uh, this um, stair, which is winding up through the whole cupola, is a reference to Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, building in uh, New York. Uh, the vertical exhibition is a reference to Maritia Catalan, which I saw in the Guggenheim thing, and we saved a lot of space uh, platforms because we could hang all these exhibitions, uh, bits and pieces, also in the vertical uh, direction. For inventing or working on this uh, drawing, we built a model and we measured it in its, um, uh, by scanning this model. And um, this is the next step in our development. Now we uh, scan the three-dimensional uh, physical model, put it into, into the computer and work on it until it's uh, finished and translate this also in the building method. This is a CNN uh, cutter um, because the whole building is built out of wood. And this is the first three-dimensional formed um, uh, wood construction without, no, without columns. And this is where you can see the bits and pieces of the collector. He loves it. He was checking the, the building every day. And look at him. This is my client who is... Um, uh, looking at the, the metal cladding of the wooden um, museum. Musée de Conflans, another, another project we did in this combination of analog and digital uh, um, 
method. The concept was to build on a peninsula in Lyon between city and the park, a building which is not touching the ground so that people can walk through the building without looking at the exhibition. It's a natural history museum. Only when they want to go into the building, they can use it. This is how it looks like. You see the, 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 the glass crystal. Uh, you can walk through the lobby going to the park uh, where, uh, to the, where two rivers come together, which causes turbulences. And this was the second point of departure for the design to use the turbulences as a uh, architectural member for this whole building. This is where we studied the turbulences from the river La Saone and uh, uh, Le Ron. This is the program model. This is how we uh, digitized it into the three uh, dimension, uh, three, uh, three D plans. This is the column in the middle of the lobby which has the form of a turbulence and um, holds up the whole crystal, um, glass crystal lobby. The, the, the museum is very straightforward organized. Um, a boulevard through the whole building uh, is planned and uh, to the right and the left side there are the exhibition spaces. Underneath, we plant a water surface, which actually gives uh, the a lifeliness under the ceiling of the exhibition spaces in the night, because we uh, lightened it up, and the waves, the uh, waves on the on the pond, are reflecting the light to the ceiling. And uh, the second reason is that. Uh, we use it as a cooling system for the natural cooling system for the lobby. I like this column very much. And when I saw these black handprints on this column, it reminds me on the cave paintings uh, where people uh, put the hand on the stone in order to say this is mine and the same the young people in Lyon did. Seeing people um, uh, working like that, I thought it will be time that we indicate uh, and we introduce um, a better working method um, for building these uh, things, maybe the robots. We worked on that, and later in China, we realized um, things like that. This is the, the other side. The, the building looks different from every side. Can you hear me? Can you see it? Hello. Yes,
In our buildings, we always use ramps, bridges, and spatial connections in order to give the people the impression walking through or flying through the space. Since uh, we, uh, until now, we couldn't overcome gravity and flying through the space. This is another example. This is um, the uh, muse two museum under one roof in China, in Dalian. It's um, on the right hand, the Museum of Art, and on the left hand, it's called the um, um, Exhibition of the City Planning. Um, it's a kind of architectural museum. This is the, um, uh, the program uh, left the planning exhibition platforms and the contemporary art exhibition box in the middle there is a kind of communication cloud where people can walk in the pink thing um, can walk in and have tea and get the information what's going on in the museum uh, these are the the the, the uh, city planning steps, where the shape is coming from. This is the maximum volume we have to uh, work with. Uh, we want to turn it, the entrance should be visible from the subway station so that people can immediately see this is the entrance to the museum. Then we have to cut away um, the things according to the urban setbacks. Then we have to uh, respect the Feng Shui corner. Uh, and uh, the, the idea was to create a three-dimensional um, um, Chinese garden, as you can see. And this is the model. And the, 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 the idea of the communication cloud comes from Brancusi, from a Brancusi sculpture, one of the most important sculpture of the last century. Um, and this is why I'm always saying we don't let push out art, that people pushes out art from architecture, or separate art from architecture. The uh, architecture for me is a combination of art and structure and material and space. So how to build it? This is the, the, the communication cloud build it. We said, okay, we have to use a robot. This is the entrance in order to build it economically straightforward, the entrance. Here you can see the combination of the museum and the, the two museums, the entrance, the cladding, sun shading, then uh, the south and the north facade, this is the north facade, glass brings light into the building because the artificial light is always very tiring for people, so we always try to introduce uh, natural light. It, it saves also energy. 
the entrance. This is a, a big hall for the exhibition. This is the communication cloud. You can see that we uh, have ramps, bridges, uh, escalators, um, and stairs, so people can walk around the, the building like in a Piranesi, uh, which is one of my role models in architecture in a Piranesi um, project. It's one of the most spatial uh, projects we did. It shows that the architecture is art as well. So it's the opening, and you can imagine the size uh, of the building by looking at the people at the ground floor and the people on the third or fourth or fifth floor. This is the architect explaining the cultural minister the exhibition spaces. So this is what I said. Yeah, why don't we do it with robots instead of people working uh, very complicated uh, by putting the one piece by the other. So we invited a Chinese company to make a proposal how we can do it. And this is how the new methods of building could work. completely co computerized and completely without people working in, on it. This is our studio, and uh, maybe in 10 years, it will look like that. <laughs> A winning entry for the Science and Technology Museum in Qingtai. Uh, in the roof, there are the exhibition spaces. Under the roof is a park um, uh, where the uh, the from cleaning, air cleaning towers, fresh air will come into the, this park landscape. Under the park landscape, there are maintenance uh, spaces uh, and service spaces like audition halls and uh, theater complexes and so forth.
In the background, you can see these air cleaning towers because Qingdai has very bad air. These towers are catching the, the air, cleaning it, and by tubes it is uh, blowing into the park area. These are the auditoriums in the underground. Now we are going up to the exhibition space, which is uh, housed in the cantilevering roof, so to say. Celebrating the Chinese uh, technology and science. International Finance Forum, it's a vertical uh, city as well. And it's a combination of conference complex, of hotel, apartments, shopping mall. Um, yeah, it's a vertical condensed, vertical city, a condensed urban district. In order to show that the inside is connected to the outside, look at the whale. <laughs> so uh, now we are into the um, artificial intelligence uh, with a lot of skepticism, I have to say, because like my friend uh, and uh, the 
Professor Singer is who is uh, one of the most famous researcher in brain uh, science. He compares uh, the big computer, the biggest computer we have in the world, uh, with the the brain of a of a fly, and he says that the fly, the brain of a fly, solves in milliseconds. Uh, so many solutions uh, that uh, the computer can only dream on. That means before we have the, the artificial intelligence um, in our life, integrated in our life, we have to develop a lot of things more than we have until now. Um, the, the danger is that the artificial intelligence is steered by people sitting somewhere in a military camp and uh, not only flying thrones, but also giving us advices what we have to do. There is also a hidden danger in this development, I have to say, but we can use it as a tool. As long we use the artificial intelligence as a tool, as you can see it um, in this diagram, how we are working, we only use it in very in some spots, the artificial intelligence, not taking over of all our uh, work. This is uh, we are the, the archive uh, of all of our buildings, of all of our uh, uh, ground plans. And this is how we uh, we are working on a high res uh, right now, using this artificial intelligence by introducing some parts um, uh, by this uh, method. We'll see what will come out. And if you look back, at our first image of where the clouds Himmelblau is indicating, this is these are clouds done by the artificial intelligence. I think both the robots, to work with robots, and to use artificial intelligence and all these um, digital uh, tools. It will help us to create a new kind of architecture, to build it in a very economic way so that uh, the fantastic out outcome can be uh, the sign of our new architecture. Thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can. Yeah, finished. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, uh, I think uh, everyone will agree that all of us are wonderstruck and it will take some time for all of us to gather our thoughts and make sense of what we've seen. So I think uh, we'll be going on into our uh, the question and answer session. So uh, I request uh, uh, the method of answering the questions is uh, if you have a question, please uh, Raise your hand, and uh, once we call out your name, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. So, uh, shall we go on to the question, sir? Not, yeah, yeah, but not many questions because I have to leave. Uh, right. Uh, because uh, how long do you have, sir? How long? Ten minutes. Ten more right. minutes. Oh, okay, sir. So, uh, I think uh, the first question is from Pankaj Bagul. You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Pankaj Bagul. Yes. Yes, so uh, do I have a lighter? Hello, sir. Yes, yes, you can ask your Hello, question. can you hear me? Hi, yeah, yes, I can hear yes, you. Yes, hello, sir. I uh, met you in 2011 with Zaha Hadid and uh, yourself. I remember, I remember. Yeah, I remember. Yes, and uh, this lecture was as amazing as that. And I think that this robotic inter robotic construction demonstration and the artificial intelligence demonstration which you gave for our students was very amazing. 
best of luck to you for more architecture coming sir and we are really thankful that you could uh, give us this presentation virtually thank you thank very you. much to all the team and chakradev sir also thank you thank, thank you. you thank you um do we have uh, sasrika you can ask a question now uh, sasrika yes. yes yes sir good morning sir yeah Sir, uh, I heard that uh, an interview from Denison related to House of Music and uh, you said a sentence that liveliness create liveliness. Uh, I can, uh, can you just explain the sense of the sentence, sir? <laughs> Which sentence? Can you repeat my sentence, please? Liveliness create liveliness, both together create synergy. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> liveliness creates liveliness. Yeah, yeah. Liveliness in architecture creates liveliness in our life. Boring architecture makes you boring. <laughs> Is that understandable? Yes, sir. And, and I even want to know, uh, what does music mean to you in architecture? Yeah, music, our studio, almost everyone in our 60 people studio is playing an instrument. So we are very tied to, uh, to music. And I, I, I was playing guitar when I was a young guy. And all my family comes from music. Not all, some of my family were very fam famous musicians. So music is accompanying me all day long. So, and I thought, okay, why can't we uh, transform music into a three-dimensional space? And this is what I showed you. Thank you. And uh, now we have a question from uh, Meenakshi Prasad. Meenakshi, ma'am. Thanks, Pravi. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I'm Meenakshi from Midas. So, how can you relate your buildings to the design principles, sir? Particularly balance, order, rhythm. Can you get my question, sir? Uh, can you repeat it? Because the acoustic is very bad. Yeah. Uh, sir, how can we relate your buildings to design elements like balance, rhythm, and order? I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. Uh, Praveen, can you? Sir, I think uh, the question is how do you relate all your designs to concepts such as rhythm or uh, harmony or those balance? I don't know what harmony is. <laughs> I don't know what beautiness is. Yeah? I, I know where uh, the, that we create spaces where people feel very well. Yeah? This is our goal. And I think that the main competence of architects is to create space a three-dimensional space, and, the, and people should feel comfortable in this space. And believe it or not, when they see it from the outside, they say, oh, um, uh, I don't know. And, but when they are inside, you can see how, how comfy they are. The atmosphere of the inside is not aggressive. It's very welcoming people by introducing natural light introducing some interesting bridges and spaces so people can use it. This is what is, is my goal. The outside serves for identification. The building we are doing, we are not doing mass production. We are doing prototypes like, you know, like, um, like uh, sculptures in the city but people can describe it, yeah, and to give them nicknames so they know where they are, yeah. It's very important in our times where the cities are very conform and one after the other. We need some identification points, and this is our goal in architecture. Beside all these ecological issues, 
I have to say that all our buildings are very ecological that because the, the, uh, the need 30 to 40 percent less energy like the codes are asking for. And sooner or later, we will build a building which um, uh, creates energy to, uh, for itself. And a better way would be if all our building would be uh, 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 power plants for the, for the surrounding. Yeah? We did a roof in Italy, uh, a roof of a pedestrian zone, uh, which serves 30... Um, 30 apartments to serve uh, with energy. Thank you, sir. That was a wonderful presentation on your iconic buildings. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'm tempted to ask uh, two short questions, sir. One is, uh, the, it's obvious that uh, Lee Kabuzia has a huge influence on you. And uh, in that respect, you've said that uh, the La Tourette uh, Monastery is the favorite building of yours. Could you tell us why? And the second question is, what gets you out of bed every day? What drives you? <laughs> Can you repeat it a little bit slower, uh, please? Love, yeah, because uh, the acoustic is... Tourette, La Tourette uh, Monastery. Yeah. You've said it's your favorite building. It is. So why? Why? Okay. When I was a student, yeah, and uh, in our technical university, we had to learn... Uh, the very economic way to build, yeah, so seven, seven meter, 50 grid all over buildings because this was the, 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 the scale. And when I came, it was in the 60s. It was not finished, La Tourette. I came and when I saw the church with the bell tower, this concrete wall and this little chapel with the light tubes, yeah? What a crazy idea to catch light in tubes, yeah? I said, if this is architecture, I want to be an architect. So, and later on, I was visiting the, the, uh, the La Tourette and Rochamp very often, and, I said, and this typology of La Tourette, you can find a lot in our buildings we did, like the, the music uh, center in Aalborg, yeah? the courtyard, and using the courtyard as a combination of concert hall and school and things like that. So it's very influential for me. And secondly, so, what drives you? What drives me? What drives you? Yes. What drives me? You know? <laughs> I'm an architect, and I want to create spaces. Yeah, that's what drives me. And when we started in '68, our office, we wanted to change architecture. And after 50 years, I can say we changed it a little bit. Yes. Maybe, maybe when we build, uh, what I'm interested in to introduce new building methods in order to make buildings more economic, yeah? And uh, people always say, oh, it's so expensive. Uh, your buildings are so expensive. That's not the truth. Yeah, the, the, one story. When we did the building, the client says, oh, it cannot be built. Then we proved that we can build it. Then he said, oh, it's too expensive. Then we proved this building was in the budget. Then he said, okay, you can build it. The building is in the budget, but I don't like it. <laughs> so this is the step in the future. You have to to expand our profession in order to get along with our culture. Uh, and architecture is the three-dimensional expression of our culture. And there are some things we don't like in our culture, but there are things we like very much in our culture. And take the good things 
and create a three-dimensional uh, uh, landmark, this is what drives me. Okay? Well, yes. Uh, we'll just have one more question. Uh, um, Jairam sir had a question. Jairam sir? Yeah. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. I am Professor Good Jairam afternoon. from Midas. Yeah. Uh, I hope uh, you have enjoyed with uh, with your presentation in, in the, all the participants. And we wanted, I wanted to ask you one small question, sir. How did you uh, think about the structure while designing the uh, architectural buildings which you have done? Uh, have, do you have any uh, thought before uh, creating the structure, uh, uh, creating the building with the structural point of view? Uh, no. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. The structure, I have a very good friend, Klaus Bollinger, who is a structural engineer, has an office. We worked uh, with him many times. Almost all our uh, projects are done with him because he is, he is developing the structure in the feedback system with our spatial imagination. Everything could be built. It's the cleverness of the structural engineer, together with the architect, to create a structure which doesn't disturb which uh, the, the, the space in opposite. The structure should emphasize the idea of the space. And that we, have, uh, we are working together in a very good way. And structure is a member which I always like to see, yeah, it's like the bone in our body. Yeah, thanks a lot, sir. Thank um, you. I think um, there are no more questions. Uh, thank you. Principal, thank sir? you. Yeah. Principal sir <laughs> has a question, sir. Just yeah. one last question. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, what is your advice to the young budding architects? To the, the advice the to architects. Yeah, um, like I said, this is not a job where you can uh, calculate life work balance. It's not a profession, it's your life. And uh, yeah, you shouldn't go to an office and work and then leave the office and forget everything. I have to say, it's, uh, the architecture is always <laughs> with me. In, in many, many things. And even the music is very important. And uh, um, this is my advice. Stay cool and carry on. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. I'm pretty sure you inspired many more people to follow in your path. Uh, now over to Justin, sir, for the word of thanks. Justin, sir? Yeah. Justin, sir, you can start. Yes. We can't hear you. Justin, sir? Yes. Yeah. I can't hear him. Yes. Uh, we can't either. I, I think uh, my mic is. You hear me, Praveen? Yeah, me? yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, oh. please. yeah thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Wolf. Uh, we are extremely pleased to have you here. And uh, it was a very nice session. and. Uh, I was wondering your energies are like almost uh, for the past 50 years you are inspiring youngsters and still your works are very young to us. Uh, we are yet to see such buildings in our country itself almost. <laughs> so uh, thanks for uh, your time and uh, it was so interesting and uh, I think you have sown some uh, seeds in the young minds of almost uh, 300 students here uh, which will grow in another 50 years. I think your thoughts will at least grow for another uh, 50 years with our students. So, thanks for being with us uh, uh, for such a long session. And uh, I all uh, I thank everyone here, uh, the participants, the organizers, and uh, 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 thanks, for, uh, Professor, for being with us. Thank you all. Thank you very much, and I hope I could come to India soon. <laughs> yeah, whenever. <laughs> uh, I love yeah. 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 And I uh, love you. Love your buildings. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I was traveling through India uh, 
10 years ago and I was very impressed by many, many things. And yeah, I hope I come back, yeah. yeah. Our invitation stand, uh, even today now, though we have, uh, we could have you virtually, but we want you to be in our, in our institute in a physical manner. And so in the land of temples and uh, heritage yeah. in Tamil Nadu. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Stay healthy. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Stay you very healthy. much. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Bye. Namaskar. Thanks a lot, all the participants, for being uh, again uh, witnessing such a wonderful webinar as part of our series. Um, you will be receiving um, a mail with a feedback form. Please fill that in, and um, you will then get your uh, e certificates for the participation. So, hope all of you had a wonderful time. I sure did. So, hope to see you in our next webinar as well, uh, which will be coming this uh, Saturday on the 25th of July. Hope to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. It was wonderful.